Thank you very much. Um, I'm Robert Colville. I'm the director of the Center for Policy Studies. I will be popping up uh, throughout the day, essentially just to tell you to take your seats and go and have coffee and, and, and stuff. I have no editorial contribution whatsoever. Um, but I am delighted to introduce, uh, to kick us off and declare this conference open, Michael Spencer, Lord Spencer, the chairman of the Center for Policy Studies. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Robert, for that generous introduction. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, Good afternoon to you all. I am indeed Michael Spencer, and I am indeed the chairman of the Centre for Policy Studies, and I am delighted to welcome you here today. In fact, after the last couple of years, I'm pretty delighted to welcome anyone anywhere. Um, the Margaret Thatcher Conference is named, quite properly, after the Centre for Policy Studies co-founder, and each year it focuses on a different topic inspired by her legacy. And in the wake of the pandemic, this year's subject, international trade, could not be more appropriate. It is trade that the government has put at the heart of the global Britain agenda, and it is trade that will help the economy recover after the awful pandemic. We are incredibly grateful to HSBC, The Telegraph, and the City of London for their support for this event, and of course to Catherine McGuinness and the City for hosting us here in this wonderful and historic building. To the many of you who are joining us virtually, all I can say is you don't know what you're missing. This is a wonderful sunny day in London. Um, they may be a bit more hand sanitizer on the premises. There may be a few more face masks in pockets, but I truly believe that we can indeed bounce back stronger from the pandemic and that promoting international trade is one of the best ways to do that. So thank you all for coming. Thank you to our sponsors and distinguished speakers Thank you to the team at the CPS for putting this wonderful event together. We are in for a truly fascinating day, and I would like you to join me in welcoming Catherine McGuinness of the City of London to get us started on this conference today. Thank you. Well, hello everybody, and a very warm welcome back to Guildhall, to CPS and its guests after the pause enforced by COVID-19. And a particular welcome to Lord Spencer on his Margaret Thatcher conference debut as CPS chairman. Today's agenda is both excellent and timely. And where better to consider the future of international trade and make the case for the benefits of free and open trade than here, in the heart of a great trading city, in a great trading country, and with the banners and crests of the city livery companies, who from medieval times championed trade and trading standards above our heads. Here in the city, we have, of course, a particular focus on trade in services. So we were pleased to see the UK's 2021 export strategy for British businesses contain a strong services element. We welcome this strategy in the knowledge that the UK services sector is 80% of its GDP its financial and professional services sector alone, employing 2.3 million people across the UK, creating a trade surplus of 77.9 billion pounds, and really importantly, enabling other businesses to achieve their goals and themselves generate further trade. So it's absolutely appropriate to implement an independent trade policy that reflects our strengths and our competitive advantages in services. Indeed, the UK, as the most global of the services-based economies, now has, I suggest, a unique opportunity to spearhead the liberalisation of trade around the world, helping to drive global prosperity and tackle global challenges. And from those challenges, there are, of course, none bigger than the transition to net zero, where one message which was reinforced uh, for me by COP was that liberalizing global capital flows and advisory services will be a key factor in supporting a successful global response. Three very quick points before I hand over to our next speaker. First, in deepening the UK's trading relationships with partners abroad, there is undoubtedly a challenge in that it is harder to liberalize services trade than goods. In particular, financial services are heavily regulated. Most cross-border barriers are regulatory, and most regulations are national. 
Free trade agreements are a very useful tool, but there are, of course, additional tools in the box, including regulatory dialogues, economic and financial dialogues, and memoranda of understanding, and indeed working through multilateral organisations, and it's going to be important to explore the whole range, and that I know is the topic of a session uh, later on today. Secondly, and you might expect me to say this uh, standing where I do, there is huge potential here for jobs and growth across the UK, and we here in the city are absolutely committed to using our platforms and our voice to support opportunity elsewhere. Take a quick look, for example, at our global city website as a small example of that in action. But there's no getting away from the fact that London is an important engine for the economy, and we need to keep it running properly if we're to maximize its contribution for the rest of the UK. And running properly, as far as business is concerned, includes having a transport system which is properly funded and reliable, not in decline, managed or otherwise. And finally, we need our policymakers to work closely with the financial sector and the sector's full engagement to help understand where the barriers lie and how they can be improved, how they can be ameliorated. That would shape the international policy agenda to our design and allow the UK to reap the wholesale benefits of global free trade. And it's very good to see those conversations underway. Thank you very much for listening to me. I'm looking forward to the discussions ahead. And I'm delighted now to hand over to Ian Stewart, CEO of HSBC UK. Ian. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. The topic of trade is definitely home turf for HSBC. Trade is central to the bank's past, present and future. We were founded 156 years ago to help connect Eastern and Western markets. Today we do exactly the same for markets all over the world. Our client base is incredibly diverse. We provide services to individuals and every kind of business enterprise, high street shops, multinationals, startups, and households, institutions that you know very, very well. Today, the future of trade is uncertain. COVID-19, technological disruption, political uncertainty. There's a lot of challenges out there. I could spend hours giving your house view on all these topics, but don't worry, I won't. I know you're all keen to hear from our keynote speaker coming up next. What I'll do instead is share some big picture priorities on trade and encourage you to keep them in mind as the day progresses. Now, as the CEO for the UK Bank, my bias obviously leans to clients here in the UK and how UK government policy affects their interaction with the outside world. But I think these priorities could chime with clients in all our key markets across the globe. So the first thing to keep on your mind today is stability. This is a predictable and a well-worn request, but that's because it really is essential. Firms need a stable environment to plan and prosper. With so many uncertainties in the global economy, we all need to focus on the things that we can do to provide security in the months and years ahead. The second priority is partnership. Our clients are emerging from an incredibly tough period. For many of them, the battle to stay in business during COVID-19 has been all-consuming. Now, they are faced with further challenges, including rapid digitization and the transition to net zero. Tackling these issues will require businesses and governments to work together. That is particularly true for SMEs. Multinationals often dominate the trade conversation but cross-border commerce can be transformative for small businesses and the broader economy. Let's help them access those opportunities. Finally, we need to talk about skills. The world is changing rapidly. Digitization and the race to net zero will impose huge demands on the existing workforce and the workforce of the future. We can't afford for businesses to be left behind. That's why upskilling and reskilling are essential, both at a company level and nationally. I won't keep you from your keynote speaker any longer. I hope you enjoy the event, 
we are certainly proud to continue sponsoring important conversations like these and pleased that so many distinguished speakers are providing their thoughts today. A huge thanks to the Centre for Policy Studies for once again putting on a fantastic agenda. Now, let's welcome the Secretary of State for International Trade, Anne-Marie Trevlin. Thank you.